Amateur Bodybuilding Association, or WABA, is a bodybuilding organisation founded in 1976 to promote bodybuilding in the UK. We headed down to the Extreme Fitness Gym and caught up with WABA President Liam Stewart to find out more about this fascinating sport. Well, WABA is the World Amateur Bodybuilding Association and WABA has been going now for two years now in the city. Um, the, sh the show's going from strength to strength. Well, having been uh, lucky enough to travel a bit with the bodybuilding myself, I've seen an opening um, and being a competitor, uh, I could see the, the trophies and stuff could have been better, medals, venues and stuff. So, um, in my own experience, I went all out with the help of the Vice President, Gareth McGlinchey, um, to get the, the show up and going. Um, there was no expense spared in the last couple of years off my show. And um, the good thing about it, about the bodybuilders who got together, I donate all profits to two Bosnia orphanages that I go out to. Um, I'm going out there six years. So um, all around, every, everybody's benefiting. And at the end of the day, it's, uh, the children are better offered. I see my job in the gym, they see the potential in people, uh, then they encourage them, but they must show the discipline and dedication, uh, and it takes an unbelievable amount of dedication, uh, they, they stand on the stage. So when you see someone on a stage, uh, you must appreciate what they've been through. We attended the event organised by WAPA Northern Ireland in the Guild Hall, Derry. Here we spoke with competitors and found out about the preparation involved for a show like this. Yeah, you have your off season where you're, you know, you try and bulk up, you're lifting a bit heavier weights, stuff then you have your pre-contest diet. This year I started 16 weeks out from the show. The diet, I think most people think you just need to stop putting uh, jam in your bread and stop putting sugars in your tea. It's a wee bit more, uh, it's a wee bit more advanced than that. You have to remember all your vitamin supplements and everything else. The training's the easy part when you're in the gym and you're training hard, that's the easy part. It's what you do in the kitchen, it's what you do when you're sitting at home. Then you're cutting out the calories, sacrificing an awful lot. It's just the diets for the last three or four weeks. I, I'm lean most of the year round, so I don't have to diet as long as these fellas. Keeps on the straight and narrow, no drinking and smoking. Getting up at six in the morning, having to crack 12 egg whites. After an hour in the treadmill, we know breakfast. And uh, staying on pretty low calories and low carbs. And it's, it's, it's definitely, it's, it really tests your, your character. And, and not everybody can do it. I think that's what makes bodybuilding so special. I'm sure there's plenty of health risks involved in it because of the diet, and then you can, you know, obviously you haven't got a Burger King in 16 weeks or whatever, you could go out and eat like a horse for as long as you want, but, you know, and put on weight very fast and lose it and then put it on again very fast. But I think it's a, there's good and bad and everything, like, you know. Um, the cost of going for a show um, can definitely reach only maybe the thousands. When you're taking on that country, eating all the best foods, and they have to be fresh, you know, you could be eating up to maybe six, seven, eight uh, chicken breasts a day. You take that on maybe your diet in 16 weeks. That all adds up. Fresh meat, steak, um, your bottled water, your supplements in the gym, your protein powders, your gym membership. It all adds up, and it can definitely run under the thousands. So what what you see in stage is a product of not only the, the individual's hard work, but their families, their, their husbands, their... I mean, uh, my wife Yvonne would cook all my meals, she would uh, get me up in the morning, she'd have my training stuff ready. It's a collective effort, you need a good support network. So being is fantastic, like uh, if I'm tired, it's preparation, coming home from the gym, food. And what you see on stage is just uh, uh, the end product of a, a lot of people's hard work. Mickey and Leanne told us about their relationship and how it has been affected by their involvement in the sport. When Leanne was competing last year, it sort of affected her relationship even more because she was doing it and I didn't know what to expect from it. I was giving her as much support as I, as I could, but I was in, I was in the house, uh, how would I say it? I was in the house still eating my, my food and she was dieting. And it must have been hard for her, like, it must have been really hard for her. Peter's experiences have been different to those of Mickey and Leanne's. I don't know, it's just, I suppose it's if a girl's attracted to you, she's attracted to you, but sometimes women maybe like muscle, sometimes they don't. It's a woman's preference, like I say, I maybe don't like a muscly woman, you do, or something, you know? Bodybuilding has left Liam with some very funny stories in, uh, to tell. Out in India, competing at the World Championships, and I had uh, 
everybody was in the team, and the Wabba team had fallen sick. They had uh, upset stomach and diarrhea, and I was the only one that wasn't sick till the two minutes they go on. And uh, as the boys were getting ready to line up, I was I was away. <laughs> I was away trying to save myself, but I just made it the stage and off again. But that would be one of the closest calls I ever had. <laughs> and this man's physique may have minimised the effects of a severe accident. Yeah, it was uh, dismantling machinery up in uh, Nintel and Leakslip, and uh, it was very fortunate. Only for I did bodybuilding for years that uh, when it fell down on top of me, landed on my back and uh, shoulder and my lower back, and it did damage, cut a lot of uh, muscle and ligament damage, and I was out for. I was on a walking stick for two and a half years, so I'm very, very lucky to be able to come back. It has a defect as regards as with squatting. I used to be able to squat like the 500 pound plus, but now it's only 4, 450 at the max, and uh, not prepared to go over that now. After the competitors complete their last minute preparations and tan up, they take their months of hard work to the stage to compete for the titles in their respective categories. Not everyone comes away with a victory. Second place, Diane Keeley. I would like him to have done better, but what can I do? It's done now, you know, and I have trained hard and I've died it hard and when you're at this stage now you just feel you could have done better, you know. So take it back to the gym now and work on it and keep it going and hopefully come back stronger and bigger next year. So what does the future hold for the sport in Northern Ireland? Well, in my own belief, I believe WABA is going to be the up-and-coming, most successful show in Northern Ireland and in the very near future. Um, any bodybuilders, men and women who's came and the way they've been treated, the trophies, there's no expense, it's all bronze trophies from everybody, medals for everybody, and the venue, the lighting. The display here for stuff backstage was fantastic, second and none, like, you know, it's fantastic. Very, very look after like the uh, photographs and awesome compared to like you know it's the only show I've been even now up in Dublin and you never get treated like this it's just awesome fantastic definitely hope to compete here next year.